Welcome everyone to the March TDL Member Forum. My name is Christy Park and I'm the Executive Director of the Texas Digital Library. I hope everybody's having a great week so far. As we gather today in our um, shared virtual space, we'll start as usual by acknowledging the physical places from which we join, all located on the indigenous lands of Turtle Island, the ancestral name for what is now called North America. Uh, we all work remotely um, at TDL. I'm joining from Austin in the central Texas area where the Tonkawa were among the traditional stewards of the land before their forcible removal. And I invite you to share your own land acknowledgements in chat if you would like to do so. We'll follow our usual agenda today. Um, Courtney Muma is joining us and will provide some service updates. Our communications manager, Leah DeForest, is here as well to provide updates on uh, community events and goings on. So I wanted to start today with a little bit of a report on our most recent governing board meeting. So we met last month. Um, to discuss uh, a number of new initiatives and, and you know, our finances and all the stuff that we um, usually talk about at these meetings. This is a screenshot from that meeting. Um, and this is a really good group. Courtney wasn't, is usually there, but she couldn't make it this time around. But you can see our officers for this academic year here, Diane Bruxfort, the Dean of Libraries at the University of North Texas, who is our chair for the year. Holly Jeffcoat, um, the Dean at Southern Methodist University. She's our secretary treasurer for the year. And Athena Jackson, Dean of Libraries at the University of Houston, who is our vice chair and will um, assume the chairship next academic year. We'll have um, minutes and materials from this meeting published in the TDL repository soon, but I wanted to share a couple of outcomes from this meeting with you today, and we'll be talking about some others at future forums. First off, um, our current strategic plan takes us through this academic year. So we're convening, we convened a board working group at this meeting chaired by Diane Bruxford to develop our next strategic plan, which will cover uh, academic year 2024 and some number of years after that. We haven't really decided on what that duration will be. We'll be working on that this spring and it will not be a long drawn out planning process or produce a highly detailed document. Instead, we're gonna, we're gonna produce a concise and clear document that articulates a high level strategic framework for the organization. And we'll be sharing more about that with you as we proceed. Second, the board approved a new policy related to TDL's group coordination that articulates some things about our role in fostering community and collaboration through the convening and coordination of various types of groups. So these are our user groups, committees, working groups, and interest groups. You have no doubt seen similar policies in other organizations you participate in, like TLA or ALA, but TDL has never had a formal policy for this. Um, and as we've grown, we've found that we need some guidelines in place to help our staff and our members understand their respective roles and responsibilities as they relate to these groups. Um, and so this is the, the outcome of that. The policy applies to all the different types of groups we manage, but the biggest impact of the policy is on our interest groups. So I want to spend a little extra time talking about these today. I, I do encourage everybody to read through the policy, which is now in our wiki at the link on this slide and also archived in the TDL repository. So interest groups, these are relatively a relatively new type of group in TDL's history. We haven't always had interest groups. Most of our groups have been really tied to the services we provide um, and work around those services or events that we um, coordinate. But these are, as you know, community organized groups that gather members 
around particular affinities, professional roles, or topics of interest. And we have a few of these groups already. There's a non-exhaustive list of examples here on this slide, the GIS interest group, our research integrity interest group, imaging group, et cetera. And this part of our kind of quote unquote community organizing work has grown a lot in recent years, and we felt some strain on our ability at TDL to adequately support some of these groups. And so we've put a little bit of process and some guidelines around how they operate to address that and to make sure that we can continue to support them well, because they are an incredibly important part of the TDL community. Um, and the way that our community supports, you know, increased access to our institution's digital materials. So we want to make sure we're doing this well. The policy emphasizes that these groups are member led with the chair of the group driving its agendas and activities. And TDL plays a supporting role in specific ways defined in the policy. We've also put in place a process for proposing new groups with a brief application that would, will be reviewed by TDL staff with our executive committee, those three officers that I mentioned a couple slides ago. There's more in the policy. I'm not going to go through every detail. Um, you can see a couple of things on this slide. Any member can propose an interest group these groups are open by default, so members or non-members can be part of them and participate, but the chair of the group has to be a TDL member. And the group has to establish a membership list at its start that has at least three different TDL member institutions represented. And there's more. Um, I encourage you to read the full policy. Um, and I also encourage folks to think about groups that would be beneficial to the TDL community and to propose them. These are phenomenal opportunities for you um, to lead and do important work collaborating across institutions on issues of interest and importance. So we've, we're sharing a link to our wiki where we have um, everything spelled out. If you have any questions about any of this, you can always reach out to me or to any of us, Leah or Courtney, or to our info at tdl.org email address, and we'll be happy to chat with you about it. I also just want to say, um, moving forward, that this policy is effective immediately for any new groups that folks propose and that we're getting started. But that's mostly what we're concerned with right now is, you know, this what's happening going forward. So any policy changes that might impact existing groups, I don't want anybody to worry about. Um, TDL staff will be addressing that kind of on a case by case basis with current group chairs. And there's no there's no deadlines. There's no, you know, huge urgency to make big changes or anything like that. Our approach here, as with everything at TDL, is flexibility. Um, so we'll be working on that over the next year to kind of get everybody aligned with the policy as we move forward. Okay, so um, I am going to move into our services and projects updates, and we should have time at the end of this um, webinar today to answer any questions. If you have them, feel free to put those in chat as you think of them. Okay, so um, I'll start with updates on DSpace, repository hosting, and open access journals. Um, let's see, so our DSpace 7 upgrades task force is has been continuing to meet. We've been testing DSpace 7. We're working currently on documentation that will show um, comparisons between DSpace 6 and DSpace 7 on key features um, that our repository users um, use a lot. We're also working on a couple of different presentations for TCDL coming in May. So We've submitted a proposal for a panel presentation. We'll see if that gets approved. Um, 
And but we're also going to be having a DSpace user group meeting at TCDL, and we're going to be using that meeting to do a demo of DSpace 7 so that uh, we can begin learning together um, about uh, what the new DSpace 7 interface looks like. Our next DSpace user group meeting is March 28th at 10 a.m. So we hope you'll join us um, if you. Uh, are able. I will also mention about DSpace 7 that our, our lead engineer, Nick Woodward, has been working to test the upgrade of our repositories to DSpace 7, working on our TDL repository. So um, we've been making progress on establishing a process and working out the kinks of that process so that we'll be ready to start upgrades of hosted repositories in the summer. So we'll keep you updated on that through the DSpace user group and um, through email communication as things proceed. No big updates on open access journals, except to say that we do have an upgrade, a minor upgrade with bug fixes coming pretty soon. It's scheduled for later this month. Um, uh, and we'll... It, as we have a firm date for those upgrades to happen, we'll be letting folks know um, in email, but it should not be a disruptive upgrade, just getting some bug fixes out there. Our next OJS user group meeting is April 6th and uh, at 10 a.m., so we hope we'll, we'll see you there for that. I think that's it for me. I'm going to hand it over to Courtney for some Vireo info. Hi, everybody. Courtney Muma, Deputy Director of TDL, and my pronouns are she, her. Um, really quick update on Vireo. We're mid-sprint right now. Um, so Texas A&M developers have joined TDL's fr uh, Frank Smutniak, who's with us today, uh, and also Chris Starcher from Texas Tech, who is really leading the prioritization of the work they're doing. And in this sprint, they're working really intensely on several issues in Vireo 4 specifically. Um, continuing this week and into next week. Um, the sprints focused primarily on performance issues um, in especially higher volume environments. So some of our bigger users um, have been seeing, you know, some performance issues that we would like to get handled before they go live. We're also looking at exports, accessibility issues, and other minor bugs in this sprint. And so you'll be seeing, um, if you're a member of the Vireo user group, you'll be seeing updates at the end of the sprint about everything that was accomplished during that sprint. I'm going to hand off to Leah. Thanks, Courtney. Hi, everyone. This is Leah DeForest. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the communications manager and OER support lead with TDL, and I'm really glad you made time to join us today. So um, I'm going to drop a few links in chat because I can't multitask. So next week, leaders from our uh, OER community will share their approaches to planning their OER activities for the academic year. Following the presentations, we'll have lots of time left over and we'll invite guests to share their own calendars and planning tools and just have open forum Q&A time. The registration for this is free and open to anyone and you know, you're all invited to uh, bring along your campus partners in OER. I do hope to see you next Wednesday, March 22nd at 1 p.m. for a wonderful presentation from Sabrina Davis and Gabrielle Hernandez. Also. You may recall uh, some of you participated in an OER support service survey last summer, and um, that survey helped illuminate some areas where we can make some major improvements to our service to you all. So I just want to say be on the lookout for some changes that are coming this summer, more opportunities for all TDL members to participate in our OER work will be on the horizon. Another opportunity is any member of TDL is invited to attend the Open Education Network's Pub 101 training next month. Pub 101 is a free informal online orientation to open textbook publishing with the OEN, and this is open only for OEN members. And as TDL are members, all of you can register for free. So at Pub 101, you'll hear from different colleagues around the states who have worked on open textbook publishing projects and um, sort of their, their trials and tribulations so you can learn from them. This is offered, I believe, once a year at least. 
So if you haven't had a chance to take Pub 101 yet, you're welcome to take it now. You're also welcome to take it again. Um, and again, please invite your campus colleagues, including your student advocates and faculty. Um, we know OER is a campus-wide initiative, so please bring along whoever you think might be interested. Okay, we'll move into some community updates. Uh, so TLA is happening next month, um, and TDL members and staff are panelists at the TLA conference. I'm gonna drop a link in chat there. If you're planning to attend TLA, I hope you'll drop by Ballroom C on April 19th uh, for Succeeding in a Digital Library World. This will be a panel discussion with Ramona Holmes of UNT Health Sciences Center, Chris Helge of Tarrant County College, Amanda Zarang of Texas Women's University, and Bonnie Hauser with St. Ed's Library and me. And the following day, TDL will host a happy hour at Easy Tiger on East 7th, which will be about a 10 minute drive from the convention center. There's no RSVP necessary, just come and go as you please. TDL will spring for the appetizers, but any drinks will be on your own. So we have a lot of events planned for TCDL before the conference even begins. And I do wanna say thank you to everyone who submitted proposals for TCDL. The committee is in the process of reviewing all the proposals and we have a goal to send out notifications the last week in March. So we also plan to announce the full program in early April, so stay tuned for more information. And next month, our committee members are planning a number of virtual events leading up to the conference to help our presenters feel prepared. So on April 11th, we're hosting a presentation co-working session. This is where all presenters are invited to attend and devote an hour or so to working on your presentations. Committee members will be on hand to answer any questions and offer encouragement and will supply a link to learn more and register. This co-working session will not be record recorded and all presenters are invited to attend. And then later that week on April 13th, we're convening our poster presenters for an orientation. Poster presenters participate in a few different aspects of the conference and we wanna make sure they feel ready. So after a brief presentation at this event on the 13th, Poster presenters will have a lot of time for questions. Again, committee members will be on hand to answer any questions. The presentation portion will be recorded and shared with all poster presenters. So you, if you can't make it, we'll share a link where you can watch the recording. No registration is required for this one. Instead, we'll just send you a calendar invitation if you're a poster presenter. And then later in April, we are going to host a similar event for all speakers. So if you're not a poster presenter, but rather a panelist or a lightning talk presenter, et cetera, will have a similar event. And again, we will send you an invitation. No registration will be required. Um, also awards winners. So we will host a brief uh, convening of uh, awards winners, orienting them to what's gonna happen at the awards ceremony during the opening plenary session. We'll invite the awards winners and talk through um, the steps of that day so that they understand what to expect. And speaking of awards, we've extended the deadline by one week. The nominations are still open and they will stay open until 9 a.m. Um, Monday, March 20th. So I just want you all, um, first of all, thanks to those who have supplied some really wonderful nominations so far. And I just wanna invite you all to think about the amazing work that you and your team have accomplished and all the amazing work of your colleagues throughout Texas. And so I invite you to take just a few minutes to nominate folks who deserve recognition for their contributions to our fields. Also wanna remind you that if you've registered for the conference, be sure to book your room at our hotel right away. Uh, we have a room block um, at the Hampton Inn at the Domain and they are offering a special discount for TCDL attendees. We have a wonderful local support committee who has developed a tool to help folks find roommates and ride shares for the conference. So if you're interested in stretching your professional development budget a little bit further, you might consider teaming up for a ride to Austin and or sharing a room at the Hampton Inn. So we'll share a link to our accommodations page where you can learn more about your options. And then, Following tradition at our next forum, we'll devote a big chunk of the April forum to all the TCDL things. 
and hopefully have plenty of time for questions from everyone who attends. We're really excited to get to see everyone in person. And um, so I look forward to talking to you more, even more about TCDL next month. But if you have any questions that come up at the, in the meantime, please don't hesitate to email us at info at tdl.org. I've just got one more slide. So as always, we have so many things for every, we have hopefully have something for everyone. Please jump in. These events and meetings are free and open to anyone. You're welcome to invite your colleagues and campus partners, non-TDL member colleagues who are in your network are welcome to join us. Um, this is a long list. You can find a lot more information and probably a few other events that I even forgot that are on our events um, calendar on our website. And we also invite you to sign up for our email so you can stay up to date. I think that's it for me and I'll hand things back to Christy now. Thanks Leah. And thanks Courtney for those updates. So much amazing uh, work going on and so many amazing events. So we hope we'll see you at some of those. We have some time for questions. If anybody has them, um, you can put those in chat, or if you want to raise your hand, we'll call on you to ask it. Um, and while you're thinking of those, I just want to remind everybody about our suggestion box, which um, you can use to send us a question or provide feedback anonymously if you um, choose to. Uh, you can also um, just contact one of us if you just want to talk about something. We'd love to hear from you. I'm waiting. A I moment. tried to raise my hand, but I don't oh, think. Oh, right sorry, button. Lauren. No, I don't think I did. So I'm just going <laughs> to holler out. <laughs> good, good, good. Please do. What's up? Big idea. Just throwing it out there is I'm looking. I'm y'all have a lot of wiki spaces and I don't know if that's something that I can have, like a, if I can just get a wiki space from somewhere, but it's not something that my university or my library supports. And it would be really fun if I had a little bit of wiki space to put all my procedures in on instead of having like a million PDFs and trying to like folder them and make some kind of arrangement out of them. So, you know. Yeah, that's a great idea time. It is a big idea. Thanks for thanks for sharing that. Do you know TDL? Like when I started at TDL, way back when, yeah. we did have a wiki service like that. We hosted Media Wiki, I think, or something like that for for okay. members. We sunsetted that service quite a few years ago, um, and our current wiki space is is pretty much intended for TDL business. Basically sure. we have working groups and things that, that use it, but um, it's definitely something to keep in mind again, if there's a, if there's a interest in, you know, need for that kind of thing um, we can, we can sure keep it in mind. So thanks for the suggestion. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Can I add to that, Christy? Sure. Um, well, and I'm just adding this because I know, Lauren, um, a lot of the work you do is digital preservation oriented. And so one example of the in our wiki, which is a confluence site, we have a digital preservation interest group section. And I really want as many digital preservation practitioners as possible to share their processes and procedures with each other. So as long as you'd be willing to share with other folks, then there's absolutely space for that there. The only thing is that I've got to add it. Um, okay. Some of our, um, some of our service groups specifically have their own access through one login, which we can manage. Um, but when with the interest groups, it kind of has to go through whoever is your TDL liaison for that interest group. So because yeah, if there's stuff, yeah. So let, if you want to share anything related to like digital preservation or web archiving specifically, I do have spaces for kind of shared resources. Gotcha. And I'm looking at that and I'm reminded of it. Um, and that might be a place to start. It was something too that I was trying to, um, I don't think she's on the call, but when Ema started, um, I was like, is there a way to like corral all of our procedures so I don't have to call everybody and say, what's your procedure for this? And um, so, you know, because 
anyways, so I'll just keep thinking and just kind of put that out there and keep thinking about that. But thanks for the, that reminder, Courtney. Yeah, and we already have some other institutions, digital preservation workflows, um, their AIP structures, um, those documents are all there. I'll send you an email to show you where they are. And if you want to share with with me, then you'll you can gotcha. just respond. Yeah. OK, cool, cool. Thanks, y'all. Anybody else have a question or comment? Okie doke. Well, it's uh, really been wonderful seeing everybody. Thank you for making time to be with us today. Uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the month and we will see you back here at this meeting in April to talk TCDL. Um, we're really excited to see many of you, I hope, in Austin this year. Everybody take care. Thanks. Bye, everyone.